Hello and welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show. We are bringing you This Week in Wrestling and I am Carl, joined as always by the one and only, it is Anthony. Anthony, say hello to the people. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, all of you. <laughs> um, hello. <laughs> hello. So, I have the honour, responsibility, you know. Duty. Duty. Short strawedness of bringing you the update on Monday Night Raw, oh, which we will kick oh, off with. <laughs> this is true, unfortunately. Um, but the card on offer for this week's Monday Night Raw, we had Lashley um, and Drew McIntyre being announced for WrestleMania as Lashley kicks off the show. That then okay, leads cool. to a match between Drew McIntyre and The Miz, which Drew McIntyre picks up the win in. Obviously, otherwise that would have been pretty silly. Yeah. Just we want to had... make it clear that the Miz didn't really beat anybody. <laughs> pretty Let's make much. Make this clear. Let's get this sorted. Yeah, super clear. Um, we had Braun Strowman calling out Shane McMahon for a match, and he accepts. <gasps> oh. We have Dana I can't Brooke. Wait to see that one. <laughs> yeah, we have Dana Brooke teaming up with Mandy Rose to take on the team of Naomi and Lana. With Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose picking up the win. So, just when you thought Naomi couldn't fall any lower. There you go. We had the tech titles on the line as the Hurt Business took on the New Day. And we have new champs because New Day picked up the win. And because we had, fucking why? Fucking why, what was the point in what you've I, just done? I don't have points. All I've got is, is, a, is a match card. I want to know saying. why, Carl. I don't Tell know. Me. That's Bruce. Brother love himself. But um like, so we had Damian Priest take on Jackson Riker for some reason, with Damian Priest picking up the win. Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman is a no contest. What shenanigans, of course. Oh, Alexa Bliss. You wrote NC next to it. I thought you meant no one cares. <laughs> I mean that too. That too. Um, Alexa Bliss challenges Randy Orton to a match of fast lane. What? Yeah, she did. And we've since seen this match. Yes, we have. Mm. And uh, Orton won in a lot of ways. He did. <laughs> he definitely did. Um, we had um, Asuka making her return to take on Shayna Baszler with Asuka picking up the win. The US title was on the line with Riddle taking on Ali, which we were going to see at Fastlane anyway. So, yeah, okay. okay. Riddle picks up the win. <laughs> Do one now as well. Yeah. So cool. And the main event of the evening saw Bobby Lashley take on Sheamus with Bobby Lashley picking up the win. So, highlights. We had the opening to the show being pretty good, to be fair. So, not only did we find out we're going to get Drew versus Lashley at WrestleMania, but Drew's promo was pretty good. A good little return to form for him. Um, Lashley looked good as well. Um, you know, The Miz didn't need to be involved in any of this, let's be perfectly honest. But, it set up a match with Drew. Um, and it, you know, did what it needed to in keeping Drew pretty dominant. Um, beat Miz, and also beat Miz like with match... Lashley's finish, which I thought was a nice touch. Yeah, I think um, I don't need the Miz involved in promo work for this. Like, and I didn't need him involved. Uh, he didn't need to have the title for a minute either. But I think because they did what he did with the Money in the Bank, I think Drew needed this decisive win over the Miz. This match needed to happen, and this essentially a squash needed to happen. So I'm, um, yeah. I'm glad they did it. Yeah, me too. Um, so it made sense, and it was nice that you know Drew was able to use Lashley's finish to kind of set up. Oh, you know, I can make people submit to a full Nelson as well. You know, amazing. Yeah. Um, Alexa Bliss, Anthony was another highlight this week. She was really good again, and even though it's all a little bit paint by numbers. Um, a little bit samey, but she was really good. Again, she's playing this crazy little lady character really, really well. And let's be honest, I think everybody was intrigued by, well, what? We're going to get Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. Would The Fiend return? Would The Fiend, you know, show up, make a, you know, would The Fiend, you know, Fiend, Fiend? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe you should tune into the fast lane results to see whether that happened. Um mm -hmm. We also had Asuka coming back after she had her teeth knocked out of her face by Shayna Baszler. And do you know what? It was the fucking best she'd looked in forever. Who knew all it would take is someone kneeing her the fuck in the face um, before she would actually do something dominant on an episode of Raw. So 
yeah, yeah. fair play. Asuka actually looked relevant for once and looked good. So, Boss. can't argue with that. And lastly, Lashley. Um, so, the main event, really good too. Sheamus, um, I, he has had put on nothing but great matches lately. Like, the, Do you know what? He, he's the very reason that you should do a superstar shake-up every once in a while because he is so much better than he was on SmackDown. It is insane. I like. I remember, like a couple of years ago, you know, he had his own health issues and stuff. He might have even had to retire himself. But I remember everyone going, "Oh my God, Sheamus is is the worst. Get rid of him." He, like to think if he would have never, you know, come back, we would have missed out on all this. He was just so good, um, just killing it, man. Absolutely killing oh, yeah. it. Um, He's having an absolute fucking romper of a year so far, man. Hundred percent. But interestingly, Lashley did not look super strong in this either. So. I don't know when Drew put on quite a dominant showing against The Miz, and I know different caliber of opponents potentially, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he didn't look super this strong. Is probably the only critique I've got of the match because if they'd have had Lashley look dominant, it probably would have made the fast lane match that we've got coming look a little bit silly in comparison because mm. either Drew would have to be dominant or. He'd struggle against Sheamus, so you go, well, how's he even going to be comparable to Lashley, who squashed him? So I think the, it True. had to be a, a decent back and forth. And that that is sort of a problem because you've had Drew on the same card on the same night, squash the Miz. But, yeah, I kind of because they knew where they were going with Sheamus v. Drew, I think it was really difficult to, to not have a good balance in this match and not allow Lashley to look dominant, which is probably the, the thing that you instinctively want to do. But I, I can see why they didn't, you know. You make a hell of a point, my friend. Um, that is probably exactly why they did that. So, yeah, fair play. Fair play. Um, but leading into the O'Shites, Anthony, the rest of the show. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> so the, the rest, everything else. <laughs> everything else that I've not spoken about so far. So Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman, it's just fucking awful. It is sloppy. It's got no real points. You know, the whole feud is built on, well, Braun, you're stupid. And like I said last week, no shit. Like, anyone can tell you you're stupid. Like, what are you trying to do? But then, you have fucking Shane McMahon going, okay, I'll fight you, but I need to warm up. He's there doing hopscotch on the side of the fucking ring. Right? And then he's got, you know, he just happens to stow away buckets of green paint under the ring. Because, obviously, his plan perfectly came together. He's the fucking Kevin McAllister of fucking Monday Night Raw. He's got his little battle plan. He manages to get Braun down. He's fucking soaking him with green paint. Like, what the? What a waste of time, right? So, my original note here was, I can only assume, if the match is at Fastlane, that we might see a Dabakato call-up. Because, Boy, you know, were you wrong. I mean, but, we don't know yet. I mean, yeah. Um, so, you'll see that I was, in fact, wrong. But, I, I, don't, I just don't get the end game. Put it this way. Like, what are they yeah, trying to achieve what, with this? This is just something to do. I understand Shane McMahon is a crazy son of a bitch and he probably wants to get thrown off something at WrestleMania. You know, whatever gives you your fucking thrills, man. You know, fair play, you do you. But do I want to see this on my TV screen just so you can get your rocks off? No, I don't. So, you know, don't make me sit through it, please, because it's shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the next one, harping back to a comment you made a minute ago. Um, new day, new tag champs. Why? Also, after this... We then find out that the WrestleMania match is going to be AJ and Omos taking on the New Day at WrestleMania again. But why? Like, so why Why are they ruining the hair business like this? Like, literally a week or two ago, we had MVP as the saviour. He'd given Cedric and Shelton the tag titles. He'd given Lashley the world title. Amazing. Now, you know... Now what? The hair business. I wanted them to keep building, and I keep saying it, but I wanted them to get Naomi, and I wanted Naomi to have a, ti- a women's title run, and I wanted her mm-hmm. to complete the the set. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know who could have gone for it, but we could have had them try and obtain the um, the US title as well. Maybe uh, Shelty or someone get the US yeah. title. Why? Uh, you could have even had twenty four seven title. Meets- I think Cedric meets the weight class to to go for the cruiserweight. They could have even gone and dominated that as well. Put a bit of relevance on a bit of eyes on that. Like there's so oh, yeah. much they could have done with the hair business where they're just there to get all the gold and had some fun with it. But no, let's just put it back on the new day because fuck it, why not? Just like, did anyone even want this? I know I didn't. Like I didn't. I've been saying for weeks. I just 
the New Day are bland now. Like, if anyone needs to change anything up, it's them because I'm so sick of them. Um, How odd is it that they're a poor imitation of themselves? <laughs> it's it's horrendous. It is awful. They're doing Who their knew? best New Day impression. But oh, like, what's ironic as fuck is all that's changed is Big E has left the group. And yet, at the same time, New Day are the worst they've ever been, and Big E is a fucking failure in my eyes as a single star. So surprisingly, some people would disagree with you on that, but I agree. Oh, I know they would, but I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think it's landing. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Like the fucking the SmackDown promo, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. not landing. Um, didn't really hit my radar, but we can if you we want. We can. We will. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, no idea why, and no idea why. A- like fucking AJ Styles, his WrestleMania match is a- is for the tag team titles with Omos, and I get it. If he wins that, he becomes a Grand Slam champion or something. Okay, which means he probably is, <clears throat> and it means that the New Day beat the Hair Business because they didn't want to hurt the Hair Business by having AJ win against the Hair Business. It but it's still just sense. as bad losing to the New Day. You may as well bring back fucking fucking Nicholas and Braun and just have them. Because that's all it is. Triple threat tag team match. I like it. <laughs> that, that's not me saying Nicholas and AJ are the same, by the way. <laughs> I realise <laughs> I make this. Oh, well, Omos and uh, Strowman are the big guys. So, yeah, that's not what I mean. <laughs> but, yeah. AJ, anyway. AJ, being the professional that he is, he would he would definitely put on a good match with that kid. Oh, 100%. He'd bump, bump fucking all over the ring, probably. <laughs> um, then the next, the next, uh, oh, shite, Anthony. Nothing, in my opinion, shows the value and respect a company has for its title than the champion just giving it away because they don't care about it. And that's exactly what Bad Bunny did. 24-7 champ just gives it back to our truth because our truth <laughs> give him some merchandise. It's a stone throw from like being given a title and going, oh, thanks, and then just chucking it in the bin next to you. Pretty it's, much. It, it's like, what, what the fuck? Why is it not... They've done nothing with disrespect this title. The only person who cares about it is our truth, and I'm hoping they make that into a thing at some point. When he's like just wearing the belt with pride, boasting about it, he's undefeated, and it's like, yeah, no one cares. No, no, you're not being challenged because <laughs> nobody wants the fucking thing. Like to be honest, the thing that annoys me more is the fact that everybody seems to fucking want it. Because as soon as he got it back, every fuck is chasing him again for it. I know, and it's and like, well, who like wants at no point did anyone go after Bad Bunny? Okay, exactly. Boys. I like, get, I get why, it, but Damien Priest. In a too, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. As as you may have seen a fast lane, the twenty four seven title was um, lost and regained in a fucking old spice commercial. Uh, commercial. So there you go. That's that's what people think about the twenty four seven title. Um, and so the final oh shite I have for you is. Um, just the fact that there's not really that many decent stories coming out of um, everything at the moment. Um, other than like the main event scene, you know, we just haven't really got a lot of stuff. <laughs> like, obviously, I suspected that the Bliss Orton Fiend thing would take quite a big step on, come fastly, which we will be able to confirm or deny in uh, that segment. Um, but... You know, as well, we also seem to be getting now, because they alluded to it on Raw, um, I think it's like the world's worst kept secret, but, you know, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, like, they're going to take on Miz and Morrison. But, yeah, you yeah. know, other than that, and other than the main events, like, how's WrestleMania going to shape up this year? It's just, it just feels bland. I mean, I hear Randy's demanding a rematch with Alexa. Yeah. After Fastlane, he's just insisted on it. Like, yeah. I don't know why. Two out of three falls, I would do. Mm. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's quality. laughs> um, so yeah so that was raw um, and I'm going to give it a, a, a solid one and a half um, yeah it was it was just pretty bland to be fair um, they've been doing a little bit better than this over the last couple of weeks so it was a shame to see in the fast lane kind of go home show for raw it just feel a bit like meh I agree. I can't. I can't disagree with your score at all. I um. I was slightly tempted to go for a one, but there was a, some some bits there. You know, um. It's got to be a one and a half for me as well. Okay. 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 Why don't you tell us all about an ex tizzle? Okay. Have you got? Have you got thirty seconds? 
<laughs> Let's cover this. So as far as the card goes, we had Austin Theory going up against Dexter Loomis with Dexter Loomis taking the win. We saw Brizango go up against Legado del Fantasma with Legado del Fantasma taking the win. We saw Dakota Kai going up against Zoe Stark with uh, Dakota Kai taking the win. We saw Marcel Barthel, if I'm pronouncing that right, going up against Tommaso Ciampa with Tommaso Ciampa taking the win. We then see the, um, I want to say debuting, apologies if I'm wrong on that, LA Knight going up against August Grey with LA Knight taking the win. And then we close the night off with, for some reason, a tag team match between with um, Bala and uh, Karrion Cross going up against Lorcan and Birch for the tag team titles with Lorcan and Birch taking a win. That's the card. Let's crack on. <laughs> uh, no, joking aside, though, there wasn't a lot of highlights for me here. One thing I am actually super intrigued by and could be really good is the fact that we, we had um, Tommaso in... Essentially, what they're pushing towards is um, it looks like a match between Tommaso Ciampa and Walter, who appeared during this match. And th- there was a, a brief interaction, and I think they're making it quite clear that potentially this is going to be a match at TakeOver. I don't think it's been confirmed just yet, but I'm all for that. I haven't seen a great deal of Walter, obviously, due to the whole COVID situation um, in NXT, and I am. Super intrigued. I know they were leaning towards him and Balor at one point, which didn't seem to have come off. But um, we've seen, we know Tommaso can put on a, a solid match. And I actually thought they were going to lean towards um, the Tim Thatcher Tommaso tag team thing. And maybe it's in my head because of the news last week, but I wonder if some things have changed booking wise because of the whole COVID situation, because it certainly feels that way with some bookings. Um, like example being not to sort of digress, but like uh, Austin Theory and Dexter Loomis did not involve either of the Garganos who were at home this week, and it makes you go, "Well, is that is the reason behind that? Like, was that always the plan, or have they had to react?" You know what I mean? Um, mm. But either way, as far as a booking goes, I, I'm all for this singles match. I think it's going to be a, a really good one if they do push ahead with it. So that's probably my only real highlight for the week, if I'm honest with you. Unless you have any others, Carl. <laughs> Don't be daft. Didn't think so. <laughs> as far as those shades go, I only really have two. Um, I mentioned the first one, and this I don't want to be too unfair to it because it might be a reaction to the whole COVID situation. But um, Theory and Loomis, I'm just I'm not for it. Like they were clearly pushing to Loomis going up against um, Gargano for the North American title. I figured that we were sort of carrying on with that feud between them two, but this week we just got Austin Theory and Dexter Loomis, and to be honest. I don't know how I'm meant to feel about this match. Like, the way the book in theory, I'm like, is, isn't theory meant to be the bad guy? Because it felt more like he was being bullied by Dexter Loomis, and I get it because Dexter Loomis is dominant, but, like, did he want me to feel sorry for him, or are they just poorly booking this? I don't really know. But either way, it didn't land for me as a, as a match or as a feud, so I hope that we get back to him and Gargano, because to me... Theory's just kind of a side character. He's a sidekick to Gargano at the moment. And yeah, it was just a waste of time. Yeah, much like the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I just need to... I'm not too bothered by the match itself, right? As as weird as the booking is. But my other oh shite is the tag team match to end the night out. Uh, that basically, they they done this thing where essentially um, Scarlet sort of convinced everyone to have this match but it's like and it, it landed it did exactly what you expect where they didn't win the titles um carrion and and finn because carrion loses his shit and beats up finn for i think he, he bumped into charlotte or so i can't remember exactly what happened but he, he he sort of knocked knocked over charlotte or something like that. charlotte why am i saying charlotte scarlet she wants um, <laughs> she's gonna be on every show whether we like it or not <laughs> so um so like you knew they were always going to, because they're, they're heading towards them to have a match to take over for the title. So you knew they weren't going to get along. And it was just overly predictable in that sense. They're not going to put the tag team belts on two people who are going to ultimately go into a feud together. But the other issue I've got with the whole thing is just how random Karrion Cross's booking has been. Mm. Like he's gone from like, I don't care about the titles. I need to really beat up um, Santos Escobar for some reason to then suddenly being like, I want the title shot. And it's like, you should have been doing that from the fucking first point. You know, Lorcan and Bertie were involved because they think it should be Pete Dunne. So I'm like, are they going to move towards a triple set maybe? I don't know. I have no idea. I just feel like the whole booking's just been kind of like, well, let's do that now. 
And considering how much time they've got to put things together, I just find it kind of annoying that we've got a, a two-night takeover coming up, and they're just like, this is going to happen now. And it's like, cool, do you want to maybe put some story behind that? Or, no? Okay. And they're doing this classic fucking thing again of like, oh, we get along, but we don't get along. You know, we'll tag team together, but we're going to beat the shit out of each other. So I was like, I, I'm kind of done with that as a concept because WWE keep doing that with everybody. I honestly don't understand how they got Karrion's return so, so wrong. Like, he was hot as fuck when he came in. And, you know, he won the belt and then he had to surrender it. He's come back and he's just been shite. And it's not his fault. They just booked him in so stupid. It's ridiculous. Agreed. Um, and again, everything else was kind of there. I don't really have any any big sort of uh, issues, but it was just a bit of a lackluster week, as it seems to be lately, sadly. Um, but for me, it's going to be a one and a half because of the, you know even the good stuff that was there. I've got some some, some actual issue with, so um, it's going to be a one and a half for this one as well. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. And uh, it's again, it's it's the same the same premise every time we have this fucking conversation is it gets that score because the quality of the matches were decent, not because yep. I'm invested in anything they're doing or yep. anything they're doing even makes any sense. The, the, the storytelling is dire at the moment. Yeah, it's awful. But, you know, they do put on decent matches every week, so mm-hmm. for a wrestling show. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but we'll move on swiftly to the Superior Wednesday Night Show. Come at me, NXT Marks. I say it every week. Bring it on. Bring it on. Um, but the card this week for Dynamite, we had kicking off the show, Penta El Zero Miedo taking on Cody Rhodes. It was the Prince of Professional Wrestling against the Lord of Lucha Libre. And the Prince of Professional Wrestling picked up the win. Shock. Horror. We had Jade Cargill making her singles debut, probably. Um, taking on Maybe. Danny Jordan. Um, beat the shit out of her, so Jade Cargill picked up the win. We had MJF, FTR, Wardlow, Sean Spears, and Tully Blanchard speaking. Ooh, might they announce the new uh, name of their taking up the stable? Sting slot. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> we'll come on to this. But yeah, they are, they all uh, cut to promo. We had a ten man tag team match with Mahardi, big money Matt. T- uh, and teaming up with Private Party and the Butcher and the Blade to take on Jurassic Express and Bear Country um, with Hardy Party and Butcher Blade winning. We had Moxley and Eddie Kingston against the Good Brothers with Moxley and Kingston picking up the win. <laughs> Tony Schiavone interviewed Sting no. and Darby Allen. Oh, um, I was worried we weren't going to get that this week. As Thank he God. does every week. We had Ray Phoenix taking on Angelico from TH2 with Phoenix picking up the win and the main event of the evening saw a lights out no holds barred whatever other name you want to throw at it it was a match between Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa and it was fucking brilliant oh, and Thunder Rosa picked so up the win so fucking match <laughs> so 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 um, in terms of highlights then so as always it continues to deliver with the opening of the show Cody and Penta, nice solid opener. It, yeah, really it good contest. Um, look, the shoulder thing with Cody is pretty annoying, to be fair. It is pissing me off because not only does he overproduce everything, but he really doesn't need to sell a fucking shoulder injury right now. Um, just unnecessary, and it takes too much precedent in all of his or, matches. Or is he selling the shoulder injury so that he is out injured when. Um... You know, he wants some time off for the baby. I mean, possibly, Calm. but he still doesn't have to oversell the whole fucking thing, does he, Anthony? It's Cody. Um, I know, he, but yeah, he doesn't need anything else. <laughs> you could just be off because he's Cody and he's overselling. You blink too hard or something, you know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so as much as a fan of I was of the match itself, um, I wasn't a huge fan of the finish to the match. Um because it was just kind of like another roll-up type situation. It was very anticlimactic. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's it's over with. I, I do think there's going to be more and better to come. Um, but it was a nice little, you know, nice little maybe start off to the feud with them. Um, I'd like to think that Penta would reclaim um, the win. And then we do like a best of three or something. But yeah, solid opener. Um, next, highlight the pinnacle, Anthony, 
and professional wrestling is here. Classic MJF is back. You know, the dude is just so fucking good. We say it every week. And, right, if you can make Sean fucking Spears sound good, then you've clearly got unbelievable fucking promo chops, haven't you? Because, let's be honest, the fucking chairman, <laughs> Mr. Gloveman, you know, we sold him like a fucking boss, to be fair. But, yeah. right, look. When, when given the creative freedom, he's there walking around like, I'm the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um but no like it this was like a return to form in terms of promos for mjf for me like he'd spent you know the better part of god knows how many months nearly six months or so being part of the inner circle jericho thing going on back and forth and comedy angles like you know the dinner debonair as good as it was all that kind of stuff but this is the mjf that felt a bit more serious a bit more of a heel a bit more kind of okay this guy is you know he means business and you know he's created a stable called pinnacle so we're obviously i said last week i'm excited to see how pinnacle and inner circle match up you know there's going to be ftr versus santana and ortiz which is going to be fantastic wardlow and hager you know mjf and jericho sean spears and sammy i guess um so you know interested to see how all these matches kind of play out and, and so on and so forth but yeah nice little faction nice little name and yeah um i love a good faction and i'm a big fan of faction wars so let's see who is the superior faction Faction wars coming to tnt this summer <laughs> hosted by snoop dogg and cody rhodes um <laughs> <laughs> and rosario dawson for some reason <laughs> who's a legend by the way i'm not knocking ever yeah, yeah um so the next highlight anthony Darby Allen. So him and Sting come out and Darby takes the mic and he says, do you know what? I haven't defended the title. I think I've defended it three times um, since I've become champion. And the fact is I want to be a fighting champion now. So, um, yeah, he's made a good point to be fair. The TNT title is a television championship, so it should be defended on TV. Um, so he's now obviously, you know, made the decision that he's going to kind of go back the Cody Rhodes route a little bit and he's going to start defending it on a maybe a weekly basis but at least more frequently anyway um so he but, wants to be a fighting champion and uh, Sting wants to be a talking legend apparently so pretty much pretty much um but I, I really like the Derby was kind of you know because he he's a baby face in he and obviously he's got loads of fans already and Has he? you know they are <laughs> I'm a fan of Derby, just because you hate him. <laughs> I'm not um, him. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I like the fact that they can you know, they went with the angle of, do you know what? I'm gonna kind of have a little bit of a callback to Brody, who was probably the greatest TNT champion. So I'm gonna open the challenge out to Dark Order. Um, so that obviously led to another little segment where they're all trying to decide who to pick, and they obviously pick Johnny Hungy. Um, so on Dynamite this week, we're gonna see. Uh, John Silver take on Darby Allen, which is something I want to see. So that is all good. Um, Lance Archer does come out, um, and I'm a little bit on the fence with this. I imagine you hated it, so we can talk about that. Um, but he comes out, and on the one hand, do I want to see Lance Archer and Darby Allen? Yeah, I do, because that's your classic, you know, David Goliath monster thing. So absolutely, I want to see Murder that. Murderhawk monster thing. Murderhawk monster thing. Um, but I can't help. But think this all feels a little bit samey again. So, whereas Lance Archer had become a babyface for a little bit, um, he's now gone fully back to being the badass heel that he was. Um, and Jake has come out, and other than him saying Cody Rhodes, your Caesar, it's effectively the same fucking promos that he's uh, been cutting. So, mm. yeah, I don't know, to be perfectly honest, whether I'm super down for it. Um, but I would like to see that eventually um and then the in most interesting twist of all anthony is team taz comes out after this and brian cage basically says you know what sting i respect you and taz and team taz are all fuming and then cage just walks off in a big huff so what does this mean is you know is cage gonna mm. break out now and, and leave team taz like what's gonna happen so considering it was just a, a sting talk segment i feel like a lot of stuff happened um so that's I'm, why it's I'm a highlight. I'm cool with the segments. I think they just need to stop calling it Sting Talks. Yeah. Well, in fairness, this week it was Sting and Derby Talk. So, they're listening. Mm. They're listening. Um, another highlight. So, I am confused by this next bit. Basically, Miro is backstage working out and he says he wants to move on. He, he wants to be world champion. So, that 
I can get the fuck on board with because we want oh, yeah. that too. <laughs> um, but basically, he says all the other stuff that's happened with Orange Cassidy and um, you know Chucky and you know all that kind of stuff. He, he wants to put it behind him, but then Sabian comes out and says, "Well, do you know what? I can't put it behind me." Um, and Miro's like, "You know what? I'm going to give you some advice about having your wife at ringside. It's the worst thing you can do." <laughs> so obviously, going back to Lana stuff. So la la la. But Sabian's like, "Well, do you know what?" The, the match is still happening, so I don't know. Are, are we are we going to get best friends again against them or what? So I'm left confused by it, but I'm excited. No, for let the prospect him move on, guys. Let him move on for fuck's <clears throat> sake. I can only imagine that what we're going to see is he forces Miro into having the match. They lose it or something, and Miro finally snaps and takes out Sabian, maybe. Um, <clears throat> which I can get on board with that too. So <clears throat> I agree. Yeah. Um, so there's that and then obviously my final highlight and oh my gosh what a highlight it was the main event Anthony wow holy fucking shit I can't believe anyone has tried to give this fucking criticism what a fucking match what a fucking brilliant match for women's wrestling as a whole like what a just what an incre- incredible match like definitely for women's wrestling but it was it was on par if not better than most all the matches we've we've seen, to be honest, mm. you know, we we were talking. It's probably it was definitely our match of the week on all shows, but this is a match of the year contender right here. Like, yeah. it was... I think what bugs me, and I don't want to be too negative, but what bugs me is the fact that like after the fact, people have come at it going like, oh, you know, you don't need to do that sort of match in this day and age, and it was just grotesque, and you don't have to injure yourself just to get attention and stuff. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, like this is probably the first time that they've had and uh, apologies if i'm wrong because i don't watch it globally but it's certainly the first time on on the likes of like you know the mainstream wrestling um westernized wrestling that we've had two women being able to go at the this sort of match in such a hardcore way and get the respect it deserves because i've never seen a woman's match where they've been able to do something like this and i love the comparison to the um brit baker to um stone cold mm-hmm um, and I just, yeah, it just bugs me. That some people even try and put it down. The fact that it was so hardcore. But you know what? It was clearly too hardcore because I may have happened to post, you know, a little bit of a Britt Baker tribute off the back of that match. And the final image may have been the bit where Britt Baker had a bloody face and TikTok a fully fucking fuming about it. Fuming. Really? Fuming. You can't. You, even can't sh- you can't show blood. I mean, I've appealed it, but it's, it's not gone back up, so they clearly, they clearly hate it. Um, so, yeah, but it was doing well, that video, too. This but, match was yeah. so hardcore, too hardcore for TikTok. Guys. No, you're not hardcore, unless you live you hardcore. Live hardcore. Um, <laughs> but no, like, this this was just so fucking good, wasn't it? It was, you know, oh, as such a good match it's one. obviously going to go down as one of the best women's matches ever, but I feel like... This is exactly what Thunder was saying. Like, like when we spoke to Thunder on the show, she yep. was very adamant that, you know, women's wrestling has this stigma about it and it just needs to be forgotten about. It should just be wrestling. And you could see it's how totally, emotional yeah. she was. You could see, like, you know, she broke out into tears and she even screamed at the end, like, this is women's wrestling and that kind of thing. And it's like, you know, they, like, it, it deserves to be main event in the show. It deserves to be match of the year candidate. Yeah, like, you got candidate. Right. It doesn't matter, you know, you know, oh, it's not men's wrestling or women's this, that and the other. And, you know, where people are saying, oh, they don't shouldn't be doing that in this day and age and stuff like that. You know, maybe. But at the same time, they need to get their voices heard and they need to prove that they do belong. And this is the kind of match you that know proves what really that. bugs me, though. I've not heard that said until we got to this match. Mm. And that proves to me that that women's wrestling is still getting that stigma and they need to fuck that right off because I'd not heard this about the you know the barbed wire fucking exploding barbed wire match I hadn't heard this about the first hardcore match Moxley and thing he had I didn't hear this about Dean Ambrose going up against Brock Lesnar in a hardcore match I've not heard this really for any other hardcore match in in the last sort of two years but then when we get to this one all right there was a lot more blood than than um, the matches I've just stated but when they put on a hardcore match Suddenly, it's like, oh yeah, you shouldn't do that. This day, he's like, why? Why can't the women do exactly what the blokes have been doing for the last couple of years? This is true. Bullshit. To be fair, and it's it just because we fucking did it better. Let's be honest. <laughs> they did. It, it was fantastic. They had everything. They had um, 
thumbtacks, they had um, chairs, tables, like you name it, they had it. Um, and I, lo- you know, I love how like thought because like the, the some I've seen the video somewhere. So apologies for the for the lack of um, articulation on this, but like like when she paused the thumbtacks out and it like they sort of echoed back to like um, Mick Foley and stuff like that, and they've done the comparative to like. The, the historic times over the years and like and how it, I'm not saying it was deliberate but it felt deliberate that like Brit has remembered that do you know what I mean mm. and, and they've gone for that sort of spot in a very similar way to make echoes to those legends who did this sort of thing and I thought that was beautifully done and I, I, I really hope it was deliberate do you know what? It, it wouldn't surprise me if, if it was because um you know they're fans as well and they've grown oh, up course, like yeah. lo- loving this kind of stuff so you know just mad props to the pair of them for putting themselves through it it was brutal it was epic it was you know super entertaining for everybody and i think the thing that you know we don't want to be the kind of guys that say we told you so but we told you so because I mean, i've been saying this i was saying this before thunder came over to AEW or I even had a match in AEW. Uh we wanted her on the show like so early on because we knew she was the future of fucking women's wrestling and truth. This and to be honest, and I don't I mean no disrespect, I just want to make it clear how much she's surprised me. I didn't expect Brit to excel as much as she had. And that's no disrespect to her. It she just totally snuck under my radar because she was she was there and she was decent and she was a face and she was, you know, she was, she, she mm-hmm. was credible in the ring. And then she turned heel and has just reached that whole fucking other level. Do you know what I mean? And 100%. she is such a good fucking heel. And this, this is just like the, the, the sort of the, the peak of it, I suppose like this, the, she can turn face again for me now. This, this is, this has made her, you know what I mean? Mm. What a fucking match this was. Like, honestly, insane. Like, um, we, we voted in the eight of the Canies in December. Um, you know, female wrestler of the year, Thunder Rosa, breakout star of the year, Britt Baker. So to see these two finally have the match that they should have had. You know, I know, I know they've had a couple of different bits and bobs. They, sh- they should have had a, um, you know, beach break or you know some stuff that should have happened as well that didn't happen. But this is the match that they finally got, um, and it was a main event, and it was fucking brilliant, and we knew it would be. And, you know, just congratulations to the pair of them. And Indeed. this will be something that, you know, hopefully we'll still be talking about when it comes around to eight of the Canies this year. And, yeah. you know, I can see this being a match of the year candidate already, you know, definitely is. So, yeah, amazing, amazing end yeah. to the show. So, And I think, like you say, hats off to the pair of them. Yeah, 100%. Um, and so in terms of O'Shites, I've only got two. Um, and I'm, they're not- I'm glad there's only two because it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of sad to come down from like a nice high end in there to, to like, let's talk about bad things. So, <laughs> unsurprisingly, big money mat, right? Normally, AW do multi man matches really well. This was a 10 man tag and it was just sloppy, to be honest. And I always um, worry about this. I've mentioned it a million times before, but when there's that many moving parts, I always worry about those sort of matches. I often give AEW credit in the past for how well they execute them normally. Mm-hmm. And normally, WWE are a clusterfuck when it comes to this sort of thing. But, yeah, um, yeah I, this, I'm not surprised this is an O'Shea because it's hard to manage these sort of things. Yeah, this this just wasn't one of the good ones, unfortunately. And, like, the, the weird thing with Marco stunts towards the end, and it was just, like, everyone else had disappeared for some reason. Like, okay, you might have been knocked off the apron or you might have, you know, someone might have dived on you from the outside, but you're not dead. And they were, like, they were gone for, like, a good, you know, fucking five minutes. And <laughs> it was just, like, Marco stunt versus the world. So, yeah, it just didn't land for me. Just wasn't a fan of it. And... This weird thing that Mahardy does in his gimmick, where he has to take he's the one who gets to get the pin and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I just I don't know, I don't like it. So, wasn't yeah. a fan. Um, and the only other one, and this might surprise you, I don't know, is Ooh. Moxley and Kingston. Their promo was a mess. So, they talked over each other constantly, interrupting each other. There was a few like weird little flubs that they did, and. Considering how good last week's was, and like I was so excited to see them as a team, this just really annoyed me more than anything because I was just a bit like, oh, okay, like it just it what didn't live up to my expectations. Um, you know, the match they had was okay, but then they did this whole post match beatdown thing as well, and you know the young bucks getting involved, and you know they make the save, but they're all conflicted because are they part of the elite or Bullet Club, wherever the fuck they want to be now, and. I don't know. I feel like we, again, right. we've just seen this too many times. 
I want to say something about the Young Bucks, and this is not going to go down well with the AEW fans. Um, I feel like I was oversold on the Young Bucks. Mm. I didn't know about them. You know, I'd heard a lot about them from the Bullet Club days. I'd heard they were like this sort of best tag team that WWE never booked. Do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, the super kick parties and all this. And it sounded a lot of fun, sounded really cool. And I'll be honest with you. I have they're running AEW as a whole. I've not I've not been on board with, like, I've not got behind them at all. I don't really rate them at, right now, and that's not to say they're not good. But if you look at what they've done in AEW, I, I still feel they're riding the coattails of the the goodwill they built from New Japan because mm-hmm. I've not seen anything really that excels them in AEW. And I'm, no. it, it, it might be a bit, un, you know, this might be polarising, it might be a bit unfair, but I don't know. I look at the Young Bucks and I'm not like, I, can can you think of any like iconic Young Bucks moments from AEW in the last two years? Not favourably, no. Like I remember no. when they started super kicking everybody for some reason, then, you know, they, they wanted fines or whatever they wanted mm-hmm. and that was, that was shit. So and It feels like they're just, I, I sort of said it a second ago, but it feels like they're just coasting along on the reputation they have rather than yeah, doing definitely. anything. Like, the thing is, you can't deny a lot of the matches they've had, like, they've had match of the year candidates, probably even, you know, they've won a few match of the years already, I think, oh, with yeah, different yeah. things. So, you know, performance wise, yeah, they're really good. And, you know, they are working with both of them have got fucking fucked up knees at the minute. But character wise, I completely agree with you. They're yeah. just. Who are I think these? that's like, the thing because it's it's elements of both, isn't it? Because like Omega mm. was putting on good matches, but it had it not been for this this heel turn and this work he's doing now, I wouldn't really rate him either if I'm honest. And even to be honest with Omega, it's very up and down. Now, don't get me wrong, this week I probably should have called it out as a, as a highlight in itself, but the little dance, you know, where he comes <laughs> out and he's you know, with like the amount of memes and stuff off the back of that, like classic heel <laughs> tactics and he's. Uh, that's, I think this is why I'm, I'm digging him as a, as a heel because he's a tit in like the best kind of way. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Like you just look at it and you're like, oh, what a bell end. But like, like, <laughs> but, you, like you, you smirk, don't you? Exactly, yeah. It's like but, the most enjoyable knobhead ever, really. Yeah. But, but like, uh, the, the thing that AEW have to accept is that they can be quite inconsistent with their booking because. You know, you'll see Kenny Omega come out one week and do awesome things like that, and then it's only like a week or two ago he's reading books to fucking children, and you're like, "Well, what? Like, how can you be really good one week and so shit the next, and vice versa?" So, I think yeah. this is where the and I think the comment has been made, and forgive me because I can't remember who made the comment, but I know we've we've discussed this before where they said about essentially that's what AEW needs. They need someone to. I think was it Jericho who made this comment that there's too much creative freedom. I feel like someone said this, someone in AEW said this, and that they need that sort of overall control. And Yeah, I think it might have been off the back of that. I know they didn't explicitly say it, but essentially Tony Khan is probably giving people too much freedom and he needs to sort of clamp down a bit. Yeah, uh, I think it was Jericho because there was a, a, there was a segment that was very similar, wasn't there, about will someone join mm. the inner circle versus will someone join something else or something. He was like, how can you have yeah, that one yeah. after another? I think but, that was it, yeah. I think it was, was it Team Taz. Did yeah, I think so. Right after the inner circle, yeah. and um, and I I totally agree with that. I think that's where the inconsistent booking comes from because like they've had a mad idea and just ran with it, and no one's gone. Well, hang on, we need to focus here or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know, but they definitely need to hire someone to, or or Tony just needs to step up. But I think Tony's not the guy for it because he loves wrestling and he's a fanboy and he's got the money. But he he doesn't know the business well enough. I think they need someone who understands how this sort of thing works. Yeah, agree. Well, that was a slight digression. Apologies. No, that's right. Um, so that was the show, Anthony. Um, but for me, I thought there were some fantastic bits on there, and there were some bits that were just a bit like meh. So all in all, I get to three and a half for me. Um, I just think that that main event was fantastic. The rest of the show let it down, um, if I'm honest. Uh, otherwise, yep. it would have been higher. So, yeah, like to be I honest, agree. that that match that... alone was like a, a, you know, one and a half of that rating at least is just for that match. So, yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, I'm, I, I was a bit torn. I mean, think we'll go for a three, but I can't disagree with you. I need to give it a three and a half to show respect for that main event. Yeah, so so good. Sorry, that unsanctioned lights out match. <laughs> yeah, that they definitely didn't didn't actually happen. Advertise and make money from doesn't get added to their win loss record. So technically, Thunder still doesn't have a win over Brit. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Um, yeah, so I totally agree with you. You're right in there. Okay. So let's talk about SmackDown. Let's lay it down. Okay. So as far as the card goes, uh, we had Sasha Banks uh, going up against uh, Nia Jax for the women's title, weirdly, with Sasha Banks taking the win, as you'd expect, because that wasn't going to fucking change hands on, on an episode of SmackDown, let's be honest. <laughs> We then, for some reason, have two consecutive things. We had uh, an interview with Edge and then a nice little promo from Seth. So let's avoid having some matches for a while, shall we? <laughs> we then saw the Mysterios going up against the Street Profits with the Mysterios taking a win. And then we saw the Mysterios going up against Alpha Academy with Alpha Academy taking the win. Because why not? We then had a promo from Daniel Bryan because we haven't had a promo in a while. We then uh, had Corbin going up against Sami Zayn with Corbin taking the win. And then because, again, it feels like we're having too many matches now, so uh, we had a a nice little interview with Big E slash Apollo. You know, that kind of back and forth between those two. Uh, We then had Bianca Bella going up against Shayna Baszler, which ended in a no contest, and we'll uh, talk about that some more shortly. And then we closed the night off with Edge going up against Jey Uso with Edge taking the win, because it's Jey Uso. So... Highlights, Kyle. Highlights. Do you know what? I've joked about it as I've been um, sort of going through the card, but yes, we had a lot of promos this week. Maybe too many in some respects, and some that I certainly could have done without. But for the most, they picked the right people. Like, mm. I like the fact that we didn't open the show instantly with Roman, something that I, I'm used to now, but we, we didn't, and that's good. But, um, you know, when you're looking at the fact that we've got Daniel Bryan, um, Seth, and Edge and the like, all the ones who are cutting promos or having these segments, yeah, they're all good talkers and they're all really impassioned and they they sell what's coming. Do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, it sort of pushes into another highlight as well of like Edge doing his absolute best to sell Jey Uso as like as much as it's a total fucking lie, um, trying to sell him as a, a star in his own right. And I don't mean any disrespect to Jey Uso there, but it's not believable. But he did his best. He fucking worked with it. But it's like, no, without Roman Reigns, Jey Uso would be nothing. Like, that's just sadly the way it is. He's a tag team guy who got a bit of a solo push because of Roman and is still relevant on that sort of scene because of Roman. Um, so it's in in reality, it's not true. He wouldn't be a big deal by himself. But hey ho, Edge did his best to push this guy, and, and I mean, he didn't let him have the win, but he couldn't, could he? Because that would make the WrestleMania match really weird, um, but yeah, I've got to give highlights. We highlighted you in terms of the promos. Uh, I don't know how you feel about them, Carl, but I think the the you know there were some good promos there, even though maybe one or two many. Yeah, um, I like the majority of them. Um, we'll talk momentarily around uh, the Big E and the Apollo one, which I did not. Um, but yeah, I agree. There was a uh, some really good talkers. Edge, um, Roman, even though it's a bit samey. Um, you know, and it didn't feel like the Roman show this week, did it? Um, no, I, I really enjoyed it. Which was a bit refreshing. Was, yeah. I think I was a bit worried they were going to keep overusing Roman, and then they end up not liking him, not because he's not a good heel, just because he's all we're getting. But they are easing off a little bit because they know what they're focusing on now. Um, so, yeah, a, a credit with credit's due in that sense. Mm-hmm. Sadly, sadly, that was my only highlight. So we need to talk about the, the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're going to talk for a little while about Big E, so we'll get to that, right? So the first one, in general, lack of decent matches, right? And lack of, for me, structure. I feel like we had one too many promos, we didn't really have very good matches, and this is still a real pet peeve of mine, so apologies because it might not be a big deal to you or to even uh, anyone listening, but the fact that they treat it like there's nothing booked anyway, I hate that. <laughs> like, yeah. you're putting a TV show on, and you're trying to get me to believe that there was enough free space that Alpha Academy could come out and just have a match. That was never planned. Bullshit. It doesn't work like that. And I hate the way they try and make it seem like that. Like, oh, this just happened out of nowhere. It's like, no, it didn't. Don't act like you didn't plan it. Like, and it was just an excuse to have the Mysterios have two consecutive fucking matches. That's all it was. But yeah, Which, just, why? Why? Because we've got a feud, apparently. Um, and what a real fucking kicking the bollocks to the Street Profits. They can't beat the Mysterios, but Alpha Academy can. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Street Profits are like just nowhere near the fucking title scene anymore, are they? Um, yeah, so I was just a little bit 
appeased by the way they sort of suggest that. It's like, yeah, they could just come out and they can have a match. And like, apparently, we were just going to have some quiet time anyway. Or did we have to remove some promos? Did we have like seven more promos that were due? And now we have to cut them so they could have this fucking match. I don't know. But yeah, it, it, it feels like an insult to the audience when they try and suggest this sort of shit. So I hate it. I fucking hate it. Um, my next Oshai Carl was, uh, well, to be honest, Natalia in general, or Natalia and, and Tamina. Um, the, the whole new tag team shit. Everything that they're doing at the minute is shit. I don't get the point. They're trying to make them more of a tag team. They even dress like an effort now, but like, why? Like, no one no one believes they're going to beat Baszler and Jax. To be honest, I don't even know who's going to beat Baszler and Jax. I actually don't give a fuck about the tag titles, I'll be honest with you. But, yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm not digging them to as a tag team. And, okay, again, personal opinion, but that that's no shout for me, because I'm like, eh, what relevance is this? Yeah, I agree with that. And, and my last oh shout, let's talk about it, is uh, anything to do with Big E and uh, Apollo? So, I want to I want to get your thoughts because you seem to have a lot of issue with Biggie as a as a promo guy. I had more yeah. issue with Apollo because I'm not digging. I, I I don't mind embracing your heritage, right? So that's not my issue. I just I really hate the accent. <laughs> to basically tell him put an accent on, which is annoying. Like he could embrace his heritage without putting an accent on, uh, but whatever. Um, and I think neither of them are good in this. But you seem to have a a, a, a chip on your shoulder. Let's say. So, hit me with it. <laughs> so, I think I'm. I think I might be the opposite. To be fair, I quite like the stuff that Apollo's doing, like his little fake accent and stuff like that. Like, um, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of it. Big E, like his promo that he did. I don't know. He just, I just wasn't a fan of it. He he was so intense, but he was like speaking without any menace in his voice. He was like Bane esque almost. He was like shaking so angry. It was like. Ah, oh, but then what you will do is uh, you will uh, get me, Batman. And it's like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? Like, who is he? Like, I, I honestly don't know who he is anymore. He's the most fucked up character. He's left the New Day, but he's still playing like a cast off from the New Day. But it doesn't work when you're not in the New Day. The trouble they've got is they've made him that much of a goofball over the years with the New Day that when he's trying to cut a serious promo, you can't take him seriously. Like, there's no way you can take that. I'm not being funny. He spent more time his face doing this than actually talking. And it's like, what? That was meant to be serious. That was meant to be serious, intense, biggie, and it wasn't. And he was like, it was just, it was god awful. Then he gets in his little fucking golf cart and drives over there and beats him up. And it's like, wow, this is shit. (laughs) It's so bad. And like, don't get, like, I'd love to. Like, love Big E. Honestly, I would. Um, you know, I was a big fan of him way back I, I was i liked him in the new day i liked him when he was with dolph ziggler and aj lee like i do like the guy but i just i can't dig this solo run it's just so awkward and so awful and he just feels super out of place so i just i'm not digging it apollo on the other hand for me um you know is it the best character in the world no is it much better than what he has been doing absolutely and i don't know he's at least he's I got something the, to say the now apollo us title Slapping um, oh, yeah, Andrade, that, Apollo, then this Apollo. That that was good, but other than that one moment, even when he was that character, he didn't do anything because he didn't have a character. So at least now he's got a character and he can relate it to like you know he's Nigerian royalty and he's putting he's got this accent and stuff like that. So for me, yeah, he's but a much better what's character. next? Is he going to gather up a load of other people who aren't American and make a faction? Maybe it's mm. quite possible. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm not really sure to be fair, but um, and another minor little oh shite I had as well is just why does Nia Jax, Nia Jax get a title shot? Why? It was why such does... a random fucking but. This is what I mean. Like the the structure and the lack of decent matches was a big issue for me this week, and that's a prime example. So I'm glad you raised it actually. How can because why why was that such a random like decision made to go? Let's can... have a fucking title match. Bianca Belair has to go through and win a Royal Rumble to get a, a title shot at WrestleMania. And then someone like Nia Jax can rock up and just be like, even though she's in the tag team and everything, rock up and potentially be the champion going into WrestleMania. Like, where, how? Yeah. I hate, I hate it. Honest, the, uh, the whole tag team thing kind of bugs me that they're trying to, like, 
and we'll talk about it when we get to um, the pay per view. But like, there's a lot of speculation right now, and I'm, I'll play the game. Like, we don't know what's happened, but there's a lot of speculation right now that Sasha's going to turn heel, and their friendship's going to be over. And I'm like, they've been friends for like two weeks. Why are we acting like they've been the best of friends? And Sasha's going to turn heel. Guess what? Sasha was already heel. We turned her face like three weeks ago, maybe more. I'll be honest, but the, the forgetting she was a heel with Bailey. Yeah. She's not long term face. Why would we turn a heel again? And I, 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 I don't buy them as like they might be friends, but they haven't been on screen friends for long enough for me to give a shit. Well, yeah. are you going to be bothered if Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks aren't friends anymore and don't tag team together? No. Yeah. You've already played that card. <laughs> it was bigger when it was Banks and Bel- uh, Belair and Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, here's a more about that. Okay. It's getting a two. I'm not even going to fuck okay. around. It's getting a two. Okay. Um, I will see your two, and I will also match your two. Um, yeah, very substandard, very poor go-home show. I don't know what it is about go-home shows at the minute, but they just don't seem to put any effort in. <laughs> um, not, nothing really sells you on what you're looking to see at the pay-per-view, so... You know, great for WrestleMania's yeah. go home, can't we? And uh, for anyone curious why it got a slightly higher rating than Raw or NXT, which both got one and a half from us, um, certainly for me, Carl, it got a two because it at least built up the stuff that I'm looking forward to for Fastlane, as in yeah. the Edge stuff, the Daniel Bryan stuff, that sort of thing. And that's where I'm giving it that extra half a point, yeah. just in case anyone's curious. <laughs> Yeah, completely agree. That's, so that's I think about like I ran to the moan the bitch and then give it a higher rate and then I give it most of the shows. So <laughs> well, no, like the so. the thing is, it did it progressed everything that yes. needed to progress. Do you know what I mean? It's so awful, whereas the big criticism I have of NXT is that the matches and stuff are great, but then nothing ever fucking happens. Whereas this one, you know, I'll take a couple of you know a double Mysterio match for example if it means that everything else is going to somehow progress and make you kind of care yeah. about it. So. I agree. It's weird because, like, for me, Raw had stories that they didn't progress. NXT had nothing to progress. And SmackDown had bad matches but did progress the stories. Yeah, just, like, mesh them all together, you might have a half-decent show. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, so that that's, that's my rationale on that. And that was This Week in Wrestling. We did it. We did it. And we'll be back with our Fastlane results and reactions right after this oh you're watching or listening to a to the k the a to the k 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 these guys are awesome check it out check it out change your life you'll be thanking me later